5am here and we just arrived at the Pench Reserve, uh, about to head in and hopefully uh, see a couple of tigers. We're over here in India with the WWF, exploring some of the initiatives um, that they've brought into the tiger reserves. Um, done a couple of safaris and talked to a lot of experts about what's going on over here. Pench we started off was our first safari. I remember when we first went in, about 100 metres in, um, we saw all these deer and we stopped for a while, took heaps of photos, thought that was so cool. I think everyone was really excited. Um, Pench was everyone's sort of first time in India and for a lot of us it was our first uh, real safari. So early on in the trip we actually seen a lot of um, spotted deer, a lot of birds that our guide sort of pointed out to us and we had no idea, we couldn't really see anything and he'd sort of stop and didn't know what he's looking for and then he'd point something out. And um, we seen a lot really early on then we sort of went through a uh, stage there where we didn't see anything and we sort of heard there was a tiger so we were all really excited, gone around the corner, couldn't see a thing and our guide was sort of pointing into the grass and like, what do you mean mate? It was kind of just laying down in the grass and it was pretty hard to see. Um, the guides could spot it straight away, but it took us a while to find it. Probably seven, eight jeeps sort of lined up on the road, and she didn't even bat an eyelid. Um, it was a female and something there. Oh, I thought, um, this is how, I suppose, they just know, that, or they sort of explain to us, they know we're not a threat. So I'm Ashley Brooks. I work with um, WWF's Tugs and Loaf initiative. Um, we're a small team of people um, that work um, on all the technical issues um, with tigers. WWF works in seven tiger landscapes across India. What we've come to is a, the central India tiger landscape and it's mostly in uh, Madhya Pradesh state and within this state there's five tiger reserves and the reason why we came here is because they've got around 500 and 20 tigers in this state, so it's a really high chance of seeing them and it really is a, quite a contrast between what you see here in terms of managing tigers compared to what we get in Southeast Asia. They've got really good management plans, really good um, protection plans with all the ranges and all that sort of stuff and then around the tiger reserves you also have these um, tiger reserve uh, lodges and resorts if you like, so there's a really good um, healthy economy around tiger tourism. Next we travelled from Pench to Kana, so they're two big reserves, I think they're about 100 kilometres apart. Right here was probably I think four and a half hours maybe and just along the way you sort of see how the lifestyle is here, a lot of farms, a lot of cows on the road, a lot of goats on the road and, and we're sort of dodging cows and people on the roads for four hours, um, it was pretty special and um, we just had an opportunity to go to a, um, a small school in a, yeah, a little village and um, yeah, it was funny, we sort of uh, myself and Nick were sort of looking forward to playing a bit of cricket. Um, we were there for a couple of hours. Um, I had a pretty good innings batting. You might see that on the highlights. one back for Australia against India. We were a bit slow taking up the footy, they were pretty scared of it at first, but then by the end, some of them were tackling and running around. I went to try and tackle a few of them, they just throw the ball away straight away, so they may not be future AFL stars, but um, yeah, they still had fun, which is the main thing. <laughs> 6 a.m. in Kona, uh, about to go in for the last time. Haven't seen a tiger in this reserve yet, um, even though they keep guaranteeing us every time, so fingers crossed. So Kana, we sort of heard it's a bit different than Pench and um, it's a lot more I think open so it's sort of almost like a movie how picturesque it is and you sort of see how quite diverse it is. I think some some parts are really dense and sort of like five minutes later it's just a massive open field. So 
so we sort of went out um, twice and didn't have a whole lot of luck. Um, yeah, it was sort of the anticipation sort of growing a bit to, to see a tiger and a little, all a little bit um, on edge just because um, we've been hearing at our accommodation here that people have been seeing him. So <coughs> yeah, it's, everyone's a little bit on edge. Pretty stoked to see see another one, and yeah, just amazing. I think yeah, to see tigers in the wild now is something pretty special. I think you can sort of see how big these national parks are, and I think we get the tourists get access to 20%. So it is pretty rare. It's, it's pretty hard to see a tiger even in these national parks. So that's pretty special, and to be um, in these little jeeps with guides and locals who know um, these national parks back to front and just learn off them and yeah just what what they're doing to um, help the population and the communities um, it's pretty awesome. So the partnership between WWF and Richmond is really quite a unique approach to building awareness in Australia and we found that you know other than the obvious link with you know tigers and tigers I think that entry point of using sport and partnering with sport to really reach um, that whole broader spectrum of people in Australia so I think it's really fantastic first and foremost and, and absolutely it's all about raising awareness in Australia and we hope over time as the partnership grows and we get more exposure for the for the work that um, we'll start hearing back from the public and saying hey we want to support this and and that sort of thing and I think the the, the relationship is is fantastic and it's really great to see it sort of developing and more people getting involved. Just working with the WWF over the last year and a half it's a non-for-profit organization that helps something that can't ask for help and um, yeah, without it, I doubt there'd be tigers around for much longer. So me and Toby coming here with a couple of team and a couple of corporates was just, um, yeah, to learn what is possible um, with the right buy-in and the right um, exposure and money, I suppose. So yeah, hopefully this video gets out there to a fair few fans and they um, jump on board or, you know, even just Google WWF to find out what else they can do. Oh, hopefully it's a long-standing relationship and uh, we can really take some, some of our knowledge back home to our members and. Um, yeah, hopefully build a really strong relationship and um, save the Tigers. Since the Richmond Football Club was founded, worldwide Tiger numbers have decreased by 95%. We're calling on our Tiger fans to help us save the Tigers. Our friends at WWF Australia have put together a spe special package for Tiger fans. So you can adopt your very own Tiger.